From here starts the speaking test. This is the speaking mock test of the International English Language Testing System taking place in Ross IS Academy. The candidate is Joseph. The candidate number is 01413278. And the examiner is Ross examiner number 43271. Good afternoon. My name is Ross. Would you please tell me your full name? I'm Yusuf Jalali. Great. And can I see your identification, please? Sure. Thank you. In the first part of the exam, I will ask you some personal questions. First, I'd like to ask about your hometown. What kind of place is it? My hometown is the Iranian capital, Tehran. It's uh, known for its hustle and bustle, heavy traffic congestion all the time, but at the same time, it has numerous places to visit, beautiful mountains, beautiful nature, landscapes, for tourists, for everyone, even the residents of the capital, the capital dwellers, to go and visit aside and away from all of the busy life. Okay, and what's the most interesting part of your town? Well, as I mentioned, uh, it, it, it's a combination of um, some dark sides, which is the heavy traffic, and at the same time, the beautiful parts of it. Of course, as I mentioned, the uh, natural um, resorts, on weekends, um, and even sometimes on weekdays at nights, you can uh, go above the mountain with your family, enjoy the scenery, the beautiful places, the, the, the glamorous lights of the city. And would you like to move to another city? Um, given the situation and the fact that I'm living in this city, I cannot physically relocate and go to another city. Uh, and at the same time, why should I relocate uh, while I'm having a good life here in the capital? Okay, now let's move on to talk about cycling. Did you learn riding a bicycle when you were a child? I did learn when I was a child. Uh, and my um, older brother, Ali, taught me how to ride a bike. Um, I fell a couple of times and I remember that he slapped me on my face. And that slap in the face... Uh, gave me the motivation to try to learn riding a bicycle. And what do you think are the benefits of riding a bicycle for a child? For a child. For a child, uh, it improves your physical abilities, preparedness. And uh, as we have this idiom in Persian that um, a sound mind and a healthy mind lies in a healthy body. So if you cycle, if you ride a bicycle, you have a healthy physique, and then you're going to have a healthy mind. And is it safe to ride bicycles on the roads? On the roads. It depends on the settings of urban uh, landscapes and urban areas. If uh, the municipality uh, thinks of ways to allow this for people to ride on, on the roads, it's going to be perfect because it's going to um, reduce air pollution, encouraging people to ride a bicycle instead of driving a car, that will lead to a cleaner environment. Now let's move on to talk about numbers. Sure. Do you often use numbers to do something? I do because I'm a journalist and a journalist always has to deal with different numbers. Crunching numbers is uh, a must for a journalist to talk about statistics, uh, talking about the populations, talking about the number of people turning out for an event. So yes. Okay, and are you good at memorizing numbers? No, I'm not good at memorizing numbers. I'm good at math. I'm good at some uh, f formulas, but I'm not good at like numbers, memorizing them, um, especially as I try to remind myself that uh, sometimes in, my, in, in the course of my uh, career as a journalist, I have to come up with numbers more than seven digits, and that... I find really difficult. Okay, this is the end of the first part. Now we move on to the second part. I give you a topic. I'd like you to talk about it up for up to two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you are going to say, and you can make notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, here is the topic. Here is a piece of paper and a pen to take notes. Your one minute of preparation starts yeah. now.
Okay, your one minute is over. You can start speaking now. All right. Uh, the one interesting uh, post that I came across, uh, it was uh, during my career as a journalist. I was around um, five years uh, within my career as a journalist. I, I came across this uh, interesting and ludicrous post about uh, the former U.S. President Donald Trump's uh, misuse of the word Persian Gulf. He referred to the Persian Gulf as Arabian Gulf, and then uh, it ignited a wave of mockery across the social media. I saw people, because I'm a journalist, so back then I was uh, assigned with this task to cover Iranians' reaction to Trump's use of or misuse of the word Persian Gulf. And then um, uh, it was really hilarious how people tried to play down his usage of this uh, body of water. Uh, I came across uh, some people. I interviewed a lot of people who said that Donald Trump does not know geography. Perhaps he has to go back to school and try to learn geography again. And then um, all of those jokes about Donald Trump were really amusing to me. And then, um, yes, uh, when you go to social media, social media, one of the reasons why social media is attractive to a lot of people is uh, the jokes that are made by ordinary people who are active on social media. And the fact that the jokes come from the heart of society by people who you uh, all the time speak to and interact to, interact with and in engage yourself in your uh, life with most of the times. So those jokes are produced uh, genuinely. So those jokes speak to your heart and speak to your mind because they are originated from the hearts and minds of ordinary people okay. in the society. Uh, this is the end of the second part. Please hand me back the paper and pen. Thank you so much. Okay, in the second part, we've been talking about something interesting you came across on social media, and I'd now like to ask you some questions related to this. Do you think social media apps are most popular these days? Social media apps are more than popular. They are the basis for day-to-day -day life because uh, people are getting used to social media more than ever. And that is why every aspect of their lives, every dimension of their day-to-day -day activities are going to depend on social media. They're, we're purchasing many of our needed items on social media. We are calling our friends on social media. So it's not about uh, popularity. It's about dependability on that. And we, we were, now, we're now attached to, so, to social media. Hey, and do you think people spend too much time on these apps? Of course. I think um, the answer to this question is embedded within the answer to the previous question. And um, people are resorting to social media more than ever because uh, everything they demand is inside that sphere, is inside that uh, area of social media. So everything you want to do, even sometimes uh, checking your bank accounts, you need to go and to your cell phone and uh, investigate the recent messages on your account app. So that is why we, we refer to it a lot of times today. And what kind of apps do young people use mostly in your country? A wide range of apps um, with different applications. Apps come from the word application, so they have to have a specific application. Um, some sports apps, uh, apps that um, act as library involving some books, which you can go and uh, shuffle through the books and find your favorite topics and favorite genres um, of books, and even some apps that teach you some languages, like Duolingo, which is now becoming very popular among the youngsters. And should children be encouraged to study through educational apps on phone? Of course. As a person who is um, involved in the society. I think that the future of society um, 
is all about applications and cell phones and smartphones. And with the emergence of uh, uh, some uh, creative applications, and even in a chat GPT, for example, we can see a growing trend towards uh, a, a better application and applications that applications that uh, involve teaching children new things and even their textbooks. So I think, yes, children should be encouraged to at least learn how to use those applications because the future is all about it. Okay, thank you so much. This is the end of the speaking test. Thank you so much. Do you want to know what band score you'll get in the IELTS speaking test? Perhaps you want to improve your performance and prepare yourself for the real test then why not book an online mock test with us that will last for 25 minutes. 12 minutes of the test itself and 13 minutes of comprehensive feedback. Plus, we'll give you useful tips on how to make your performance better. Remember, all our examiners are especially trained by British Council instructors. So, we know how to help you. Join us.